This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. There he is, ready to rock and roll. How you feeling, my man? You feeling good? I'm good. I'm good. How you feeling? Excellent. I can't uh, complain, man. It's Friday. I get to uh, relax right. tomorrow. I'm not working seven days a week now with uh, the That's college great. football season over now that uh, the Canes aren't playing. So it's a good thing. That's great. Um, get that rest, man. That rest is important. I actually, hey, somehow, I actually mm-hmm. somehow have my first weekend off in like two months. And so I don't have a game this weekend, which will be uh, unique. And so as, well, as listen, I have insight to what goes on in the offices over there. I was uh, I was listening on in. They said, you know, we've beat this guy up. We've been sending him <laughs> to the North Pole literally every week. You know, he needs a week to thaw out. And, you know, so that's really what they're doing. They're just giving you a week to thaw out. I appreciate they, they it, though. Have, they have given you some Arctic places to cover over the last couple of weeks. So they have. They're trying to see if the Florida man can break. And yeah. I have not breaking, broken yet, uh, but one or two more coal assignments, and I might have broke. I don't know. You're now that you're Florida, we're we're pretty tough here in Florida. So it's a, we pull up, we put up with all kinds of stuff, hanging chads. We put up with everything that yeah. goes on here in Florida. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. If we can, if we can deal with the the hurricane scares three or four times a year, then we can deal with anything, right? Exactly. <laughs> we have we have everything going on down here all the time. So yeah, we're we're. We're always in control here. All right. And by the way, they keep asking me this, and I keep running it by you guys, and and I've said this already for a while. Byron Jones is not pulling a Will Fuller. What Byron Jones is, he's a different cat. I'm trying to explain to people. He's kind of like, dude, He he's like, he's GQ. You know, he's uh, high-end. He's uh, Porsche. He's... And, and he, unfortunately, his body has had setbacks in this whole recovery uh, of this whole process. And it's not just about his injury. His injury and his recovery have led to other setbacks. And maybe some players might suck it up and play at 85%, but he's not that guy. You can't run a Porsche. Maybe that's why he loves Porsches. But you can't go out and take a Porsche out on the road if it's not really fine-tuned. If it's not, it's going to run like crap and you're going to ruin the car and those kind of things. It's a very delicate type of vehicle. Well, I'm not telling you he's necessarily delicate. I'm just telling you he's kind of particular about things. So I don't know what you hear, but the other thing is he's not there all the time. And that's why it's also kind of, you know, makes people pissed off in that building because even throughout this process, he's not there every day. And as I mentioned to Poopart, you've been there a hundred times this year in the locker room. How many times have you seen him? He told he told me not once, and so there you go. It tells you what's what. It's a really odd situation what's going on with Byron, but it's not necessarily a Will Fuller thing. He's just a different type of dude. I don't know what you. Yeah, heard. yeah, yeah. I, I've kind of shared here, honestly, a lot of what I've heard throughout the process. I think I told you guys a couple months ago that I didn't think that that we would see Byron Jones uh, again in the Dolphins uniform. Um, you know, not only this season, but I, I think period. And, and, you know, I don't want to get into like what his mindset is, like who he is as a guy, because I do think that he's a good dude. And I don't want to, you know, there's oh, been yeah. a lot of like, I didn't, I didn't say a lot he was of, a bad dude. I'm just right, saying right, he's, he's got, he's got this way of doing things. And, and, he, just, and so, so what I will say, what you mentioned is what I've heard as well. And I've shared it with you is that I, I have heard he's had setbacks beyond what his Achilles is now. What the where he is medically, where he is in his ability to play, there may be some disconnect there. And, and you know, I think the reality is is what you mentioned. There are different guys who go about things different ways, right? You've got Teron Armstead out here trying to play with a partially torn pet, which you know a lot of doctors would probably tell you not to play with that. And so right. he may be going against maybe some some views here because you know, maybe be- best for him to be 100% to, to look healthy, to to make sure he doesn't risk tearing it for, further. But this dude has a propensity to play through injuries. He told us early in the early in his career, unfortunately, he's been injured a lot. So he's had to work on compensating. And so there are guys like that. And there are other guys who some, be- quarter, some quarterbacks get concussed in the first half and then come back and win the game <laughs> in the second half. Right, right. And, and a lot of times we 
we equate that to toughness, right? If you come back, you're tough. If you don't, you're not. But I think I want to be a little careful with that because I've seen guys, you know, I'm not saying it would happen to Tehran or anyone else, but I've seen guys ruin their careers, essentially coming back too early from injuries because they're trying to tough it out and it affects their long-term um, growth. And so I think there has to be a little bit of balance between, you know, toughness and playing through nicks and bruises versus risking your long-term health. Um, that being said, like with Byron Jones, I think there was a lot of hope and it got dissipated quickly about his ability to return. Uh, I have also heard that there's been, you know, whether it's a team approved or not, I don't know, but he has been gone from the facility for, for oh, yeah. you know, weeks, <laughs> periods at a time. And so, um, yes. you know, he hasn't always been here. And like I said, that may be the doctor saying, hey, you need more time to rehab, go away. Um, but yeah, that that's something where, you know, well, yeah, they never basis, make it go away that long. Uh, right, Cam, you right. know that I'm they just want saying, eyes I, I can't, on you. I, they want to have eyes, especially during the season. They right. want you. They want to keep up with your rehab and your progress. You know that, and I know that. Right, right. And like I said, I can't speak to it directly. I don't like to speak about anything that I don't know that what the doctors told him directly. Uh, I'm just telling you what I know and what my insight is, and everybody else can put their p's and q's together um, from there. But I think the reality of the situation is, you know, he had been playing solid ball over the first two years here. Going into the third year, he he had this injury, he had surgery on, and I think it'll probably end his career. And um, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't know if he ends up bouncing back and playing well somewhere elsewhere. But I think that's sort of the um, as a thirty year old corner, you've seen him kind of deal with some injuries. I think as we go into twenty twenty three and definitely the rest of twenty twenty two, I think the Dolphins start thinking about life without. Byron, and so that means Xavier, that means Cater, and that means probably going out and signing or drafting another corner, um, you know, coming yeah. into next year. Well, the good thing is they get Needham Trill back along with Cater, so that's really, really good depth. And then I'm sure X will come back for one more season because this season they'll release Byron, and I think next season they'll release X, you know, overall. That's probably cap-wise. That's probably what's going to end up happening because I think the the window for X is ne after next season, if I'm correct. I think that's kind of the way. It, it uh, I would have to I would have to look at his contract whether he has two or three guaranteed. Um, I'm, it may be two. It may be two, um, but I'm not certain on that. Yeah, I'd have to I'd have to, I have to look it up. Uh, your gut tells you Armstead plays, right? I think that he he tries to go, man. The question yeah. I do have is, is he, if he's able to finish. Um, you know, like you said, he's trying to play with the harness on. Um, I see. Yeah, I've I seen guys play an entire season with, a, uh, not an entire season, but a, a half a season after they injured with a harness. I've seen guys right. that, that are able to last. I've seen guys that haven't been able to last. By the way, okay. So I, I've, I, I, it's both ways. Uh, and I've watched defensive ends and linemen, offensive linemen, play with the harness. So right. I've, I've watched. And both. so yeah, it, it absolutely can be done. And yes, I think does. that he, I think they envision him doing that. But at the same time, I think, you know, it's not directly related to Armstead, but they signed Eric Fisher with the thought of if for whatever reason it can't work out with the harness or for whatever reason Armstead suffers another injury, they have a, a safety valve that they ideally don't want to use. But Teron makes his team so much better, even if you've got a 75% Teron Armstead. But, you know, what – you know, we talk about guys and their toughness. It was amazing to me to listen to Teron describe how he couldn't even lift his arm after uh, suffering an injury, I think, a couple of weeks ago. And we all think about, hey, whether a guy's going to play or not. This dude could not, like, put his shirt on um, by himself after that game. And so it's crazy just even two weeks ago, two weeks later, we're talking about is he going to play, is he not? I think that just kind of speaks to his toughness. And I know he had a lot of people knocking him for his injury history when the Dolphins signed him. Um, but I think the Dolphins would take this 10 out of 10 because even though he has had injuries, the dude is not, you know, the dude does everything to be able to play through it. The toe injury that I, that I talked about earlier this year, that's something that would put a lot of players on IR to be able to get that healthy and, and he's playing through it. And so, um, you know, regardless of how, uh, how prone he is to get injured, he's a guy who you, never, you know he's never going to shut it down. Um, while dealing with an injury. And so I, I think that, you know, it'd probably be a game time decision type deal where they try to see how he looks in pregame, how he tries to play with it. Um, and then, like I said, they got to value his long term deal. Does it make sense for him to wait another week and wait to Buffalo? Does that get him that much healthier or, or that much safer? Or is he at the same risk and you say, hey, we're just going to play him these last four games and into the playoffs and see how long uh, we can get him? 
Cam, what do we know about Fisher? Was he sitting on the couch like my fat ass just uh, watching TV and then uh, ring? Hey, would you like to, you know, you know, after I finish this bowl of Doritos, yeah, I'll go see you. Or, or was Eric Fisher constantly working out and, and in shape and trying to work his way back? Was he in a football uh, type of mind? Or is this kind of a Brandon Shell thing where he had an injury and out of shape and they needed a few weeks to get him back into shape and and then get him out on the field. How is those this Fisher thing going to translate? Which one is it? Oh, we lo we lose him. He froze. Froze. But he froze with a smile. I did. You know I, did. I got the okay, uh, so overheated so phone. Which one is he? Me? Is he me? Was he me or is he a guy that was actually like working out? No, nah, he's working out, man. He's he was he was getting used to uh, getting the reps to play, um, and so from what I understand, he you know he obviously football workout is different than working out and training on your own. But he was prepping for the opportunity. He thought he would be signed in free agency, um, and he wasn't. And so he was prepping for camp. He didn't get signed. Part of his thing has been injuries, and so um, you know he was kind of waiting for this opportunity. And so he was not doing the big O. Uh, sitting on the couch, or really the cam. I, I sit on the couch a lot, too. So he wasn't doing either of our workout routines. <laughs> yeah, but you look good, and you're in good shape. Not me. I am i don't look good, and I'm not in good shape. So, you know, let's just let's, uh, let's be honest here now, okay? Let's be honest. In fact, you froze on us with a network smile and everything. You even have a network smile, bro, okay? I mean, you know. You, <laughs> a network smile. You're, 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 you're at another <laughs> level, bro. You know what I mean? We we all grow up. We all want to grow up to be you. You know that's kind of what it is. You know. No, no, you gotta you gotta strive. You gotta strive for more. You gotta strive. No, for we more. Want, no. I, if I could just be half as good looking as you, I mean, my my wife might actually love me again. I don't know. I mean, you know, there might be a chance for me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, by the way, um, are you expecting a pissed off and motivated Tua Tunga Vailoa this week? Because I think he's going to light those mofos up. I definitely think he'll have some extra juice. It's funny because I'm going to be on NFL Network in like two hours. And that's one of my things I want to talk about because uh, there's been a lot played up on the Justin Herbert Tua thing, right? Because obviously the number five pick, number six pick, we talked on the show about how, you know, Chargers fans have said, oh, we got the better quarterback. Now Tua's having the better year, right? Tua said Wednesday, I'm not worried about any of this. You know, you guys can talk about it. But as we've talked about with Tua before, Tua has heard these things. And although he plays the I don't pay attention to it, he hears it. Um, he, he says the right thing publicly. But I do think he'll have a little extra juice. He wants to one-up his draft partner. He also wants to show that last Sunday was was a fluke, you know, that he is this guy that we've seen throughout the year. And so I hope he's not too amped up because, you know, some of his issues on Sunday were accuracy. And so I don't hope it doesn't affect his accuracy. But I do think he'll be extremely motivated, um, not only for his personal reasons, but also to ideally shut a couple people up. I, and not only that, I think Tua works well with anger and frustration motivation. The, this other motivation was this this love he has for his coach now that has backed him up. And I, I just think he, he pressed a little too much in that game. But the, the when you doubt him, when you throw the negative shit at his ass and all that kind of stuff, I think that that's what motivates Tua. I, I think those kind of things don't make him focus a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like if you tell him he can't do something, that's probably when he's probably at his best focusing in and i think that that's what you're going to get uh this week i think you're going to get a a really focused to a just like ne the f following week against the bills it's yep. uh, they are the measuring stake uh, you guys aren't you know they're the super bowl uh, uh contenders you're not this that and that's the kind of stuff that motivates him this other stuff was nothing from the periphery it was all from within it was his heart that wanted to please his coach and i think it that's why it just went awry, you know what I mean? Which has happened you know. to all of us, dude. By the way, if you did it in front of your dad or or a younger brother or for the older brother or any kind of sibling that, that raised you and you wanted to impress them and you wanted to get an A on the test and you ended up getting a B or C or, or something, it happens to all of us at one point or another in our lives. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. And, and the other thing that honestly helped to, uh, like – 
we all know about the comfort and confidence. That's what really helped him uh, have the year he's had. He's also going to be playing a defense that is a lot worse than the 49ers. Like the reality oh, yeah. of it, like regardless of, of Tua being better, like I think he'll be better than he was. But I also think that his competition will be worse. The 49ers have the best defense in football. The Chargers are 30th in scoring defense. Uh, the 49ers have Nick Boza and Fred Warner. The Chargers, their Boza's injured. And now Duran James has been banged up with a quad injury. And so – this defense had zero sacks last week against the Raiders. And um, I think that Tua will feel a lot more comfortable <laughs> just playing, just facing the Chargers defense versus the 49ers defense. That'll play a role as well. Any uh, any other injuries we should be concerned about at all for the Dolphins? I saw Tyree Kill popped up with a, a illness yesterday. He'll be fine. Um, he missed practice because of it, but I know he's a big name and some people will be alarmed, but he, he, from what I understand, he should be good for Sunday. Uh, Jalen Waddle already told us that he was going to be good, but he was full participant at practice yesterday. So he has a leg injury, but he should be good to go as well. And so those are really the major ones to, to watch out from. Beyond that, it's just whether or not Tron Armstead is able to go. And like I mentioned, I think it'll probably end up being a questionable diagnosis and maybe they make the call before game time. Maybe they don't. Um, but I can see it going either way. I, just knowing Toronto, I wouldn't count them out to play, though. Well, one more thing before I let you go. If I'm Baker Mayfield, do you agree with this? Even if, if, if somehow or another you actually play well down the stretch, which I don't know if you will or not, but if I'm him with all the ups and downs, dude, don't just go to the next team that gives you a shot. Go to a team like where you're at right now. If you even have to stay there and be a backup to Stafford for a year or two, but play for, for McVeigh, I would stay if I'm him or go find a really good offensive mind to help you that may understand your talents. Don't just go anywhere that might be offering a job and it might not be a stable place that really, because you're not the guy that raises all ships. You know what I mean? You're the guy that can be, at best, a facilitator. You know what I'm saying? So go somewhere where somebody can help you more than you think you can elevate others. Correct? You agree with that? Yeah, I think LA is uh, – yeah, absolutely. I think LA is a great spot for Baker uh, because of the big day factor. You know, I don't know if you watched the broadcast, but yesterday they were raving about yeah. how four and a half years ago McVay saw – Mayfield on the plane to the combine and, you know, loved him, but they couldn't draft him. You know, having a coach believe in you, as we see with Tua, is, is important. And the reality is Matthew Stafford, you know, been dealing with sort of a injury thing that's a little bit kind of um, honest and, and it's got some people concerned around the league from what I discussed. So, you know, he's not expected to play for the rest of the year, but you're all going to need security for whatever. It, the rehab does not go the way you want this offseason. And so I definitely think for him, there's probably going to be a lot of teams lining up, give him the contract. So, yeah, maybe it makes sense to rehab your career in L.A., especially if you finish strong. And maybe, just maybe, depending on what goes on that, maybe you're the starter in week one. All right, clearly you must be like an Area 51 or something because your reception has been kind of uh, in and out there. But uh, we got you. We got you on that last one. You, you were you – were, you're breaking up a little bit on that one. Uh, what do you got going on this weekend? So you're Did just you chilling this weekend? Yeah, yeah, we got you. We got you. So you're just chilling yeah. this weekend? That's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've just got chilling? TV going on in about an hour and a half. So uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Yeah, yeah. I'll be on TV, the NFL Network, uh, from 1 to 3 today, talking a little Dolphins, uh, Chargers, talking a little bit of the Bengals-Browns game, and uh, having some fun there. And then, yeah, the whole weekend I will be uh, – I guess chilling. You know, the wife's got me. We're going around to a different couple different uh, fa uh, friends and family uh, events this week. And, um, yeah, just hanging with the fam. So that'll be my weekend. There you go. And, uh, yeah. Enjoy it, baby. Follow him on Twitter at Cameron Wolf and catch his work there at the NFL Network. Cam, as always, much love. We'll catch up next week, my friend. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Thank you. There you go. The great Cameron Wolf, baby. We love him. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.